I am sipping on an iced coffee with a little bit of pressed coconut. It's my secret ingredient. Welcome back for another episode of Sipping with Sakar. We are here with the amazing. I was someone who came to Silicon Valley, joining Google, you know, starting from the ground up. I totally fell in love with technology. and You know, what's next? So welcome back for another episode of Sippin' with Sakar. We are here with the amazing Shannon Snow, who's the COO, Chief Operating Officer of World of Women. Uh, we became friends over some time now, and she's here. And we want to know, what are you sipping on, Shannon? I am sipping on an iced coffee with a little bit of pressed coconut. What? It's my Pre secret ingredient. That's crazy. And that's crazy. Pressed coconut. Why, <laughs> why pressed coconut? Where did that come from? I find that having, I'm a huge okay. coffee fan. If you even look at photos of me, I'm always carrying a wow. coffee, full okay. caffeine addict. I love it. But I find it's not the regular coconut water that I put in. It's that pressed coconut water. That's a little bit oh. thicker. It's a little bit milkier and it adds some sweetness yeah. to the iced coffee. I find it just gives you a, just, a little like, something you went extra over the top. to come into. And with just like the simple, the simple ingredient for me, I'm just over here sipping like, like seltzer. Like that's it. You, you're just outshining me right now, um, <laughs> which is great. It was, a, it was a long weekend. So I need to get some, some water. So cheers, cheers to you for being here, uh, for sharing your time. Cheers. <laughs> I've been looking so forward fun. to this. I feel like we've. We've been always seeing each other, but it's always right? a couple minutes right? here, a couple minutes there. So I've been really looking forward to actually, sit, actually down. sit down. We could sit, sip, we could exactly. relax a little bit. And uh, we could just talk about life. So for like the people that don't know, like the 1% of the world who doesn't know who the amazing Shannon Snow is, can you give us like, I don't know, like a comic book one, like an origin story? Like who is Shannon Snow? Oh, it's so kind. So I have made my whole career in Silicon Valley. I was someone who came to Silicon Valley in 2004. I was at Stanford. I had actually planned to become okay. a journalist. I was there. And once I got there, um, I was in journalism school there studying communications. But it was at that time where that big crash of the one of the first waves of the web e-commerce what happened in 2000 but things were just starting to build back up right google was on the scene a lot of companies were on the scene and while i was at stanford i got this job at red herring which was um sort of a precursor to crunchbase and some of these ones that cover all of these silicon valley startups so i would spend all my time driving around silicon valley interviewing startup ceos about what they're building and I totally fell in love with technology and this impact and this idea that we can use tech, tech to change the world. So fast forward, I did not end up becoming a journalist. <laughs> I ended up joining Google, you know, starting from the ground up, you know, entry level, working my way up through the business, um, you know, built, uh, you know, tons of different business teams. You know, at that time, the, every six months, the business would be evolving, growing, you'd have new roles, had the opportunity to work abroad and grow businesses as well. Spent 11 and a half years there. Wow. Which where abroad? Like that. Um, where where abroad? my career. India. Uh, Ooh, India. We'll get back to that. That's incredible. India. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So much there. So eventually we moved on to what was Facebook, now Meta. Um, so was there in the transition from, hey, we're, we're really social media and mobile to we're going to take a look forward to AR, VR, the metaverse. So fascinating. I was working with large entertainment companies, helping them think about their marketing strategies. We moved from Web2 into the metaverse. Um, but I was really reminded of my roots of why I dang, fell dang. in love with tech, right? Using technology to scale to more people, you know, especially for Google, it was like, we're going to get more information in mm -hmm. the hands of the people, right? It was like access to information was the original mission. And it was why I became captivated in the first place. So um, right around that time, I started becoming really enamored with Web3. I love this idea that the next generation of the internet was going to be defined by what people want to do with it. How do we give power back to consumers? How do we get more ownership over our content? How do we use the next phase of the internet to make the world the place that we want it to be, where everybody has access and everyone's included? And I became a so holder of World of Women, which is, for those who don't know, 
um, one of the top Web3 companies, you know, iconic NFT collection that was one of the first that really stood and, and had women avatars and represented women in the metaverse. And uh, I ended up jumping in, becoming the COO of World of Women as that team expanded and just took a whole new turn in my career and hopefully to continue that mission of really using tech I for mean, good. Such an incredible story. And if people don't tell you this enough, you're doing an amazing job. Um, you're such a personable person. And obviously you're you're working with incredible people and you guys are on one huge mission to just keep bringing this forward. So it's so great to see and be a part of. Shannon, like, were you like a techie kid? Like, were you like playing with like computers and stuff back in the day? Like before you started your professional career and all these amazing things, like what was Shannon doing in the house? So I definitely had access to computers. I think what is really interesting, if you look at a lot of these huge tech CEOs, and I'm not at all in this category, but you look at like, you know, Bill Gates, why was, you know, he's such a phenom. He had early access to computers. You know, he got really good um, at a time yeah. when not a lot of people had access. Um, my dad is a mm -hmm. botanist, now we're getting um, to environmental it. scientist and professor Professor of biology wow. at University of Portland. I grew up in Portland, Oregon. So He's he actually used research money to get, um, you know, get actually one of those first Macs. And I'm so dating <laughs> myself, but there was a time when not not everyone right. had a computer in their household. My dad had one of the original Macintosh computers that, you know, it wasn't, this was way before wow. laptops. It was like when everything yeah. was a desktop, but he would carry it home in a bag. Uh, so when I was, you know, very young, I want to say five, six years old, he would bring wow. home the Mac and we would play with it. And so I was always, you know, playing computer games, yep. always really interested, um, you know, when the internet came out, which was, you know, we, we probably got internet access when I was in high school, which was uh, again, like, this is yeah, not at yeah, a time yeah. when everyone had access. Um, and, you know, I do think that there is something, so much of the opportunities that we have are <laughs> where you are in the world and the access you have and and um and the time at which you're born i do feel like i'm in this generation where i sort of knew what the world was before technology and so i don't take for granted how revolutionary yeah, well. technology has been um but was introduced to it early enough where you kind of understand the possibilities right. and you're not scared right um like i'm not scared by ai us. because i'm like okay right. there's always fear that comes with new tech but um but there's always opportunities and i think that we have to have people who right are excited about the upside and want to work on like how how do we get it there how do we to, use it to, really to actually it help us not be scared of of what it's doing and stuff like that a hundred percent you know exactly i always exactly. i always find it fascinating exactly. to hear people's like origin stories like to see like how did it start and then where are they at now you know like for me like my dad used to have a restaurant like back in the day and so like he used to tell us stories and stuff oh like about the restaurant, but like I never thought that I would be like a chef or anything, right? And then like to your point about like, you know, my dad used to have a computer and we used to have like a computer room and we just, you know what I mean? And like, I didn't really mm -hmm. go out a lot as a kid because like my parents were strict, you know, they're both like retired police officers. So it was like hard to go out playing the street. I was always mm -hmm. inside my house playing with the computer or watching television and stuff like that. And now fast forward, right? And now yeah. this new transition of the web comes out and it just, for me, it's like clicking, like, you know, like those light bulbs go off of like, oh, this is why I enjoy it. Because like, I remember back in the day when we first got our first computer and then, then the laptop came out, then Facebook came out and we start, you know, like these full transitions. So it's, it's so great to see. Yeah. So you were. Oh, totally. No, <laughs> I'm so curious, actually. So you grew up with a Westmont background. When did you actually really believe that you could go in? be a chef you know and, for and me like industry. i was just always a fat kid <laughs> i loved food so so much and um i think one of the turning points was when i was in high school i was taking home economics and i was just taking it for easy a and this teacher me and her really didn't get along she she really didn't like me by any means and one day she stops like mid track as i'm cooking in her class like just moving the pan and she just stops me she's like sakari like do you cook at home and I was like, yeah, like, like, like it was kind of like, leave me alone. Like, yeah. And then she's like, you have a natural, you have a natural ability. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. From that day on, she always made it a point to say hello to me. And I was just like, so confused. And then she recommended me for mm -hmm. advanced cooking classes. And then, 
you know, my, my, my grandparents, you know, my grandfather's from Jamaica. My grandmother grew up in the South. They were very old school, like, hey, you have to go to college. So I just wanted to make them happy. And so the only thing I was good at was cooking. And yeah. so I was like, I'm just going to go to school to make them happy. Right. And then I thought I was just going to own McDonald's for the rest of my yeah. life. I was like, oh, the college that I went to is right next door to a McDonald's. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go to this school. I'm going to make them happy. And then I'm just going to own like 13 McDonald's. And like, that's how I'm going to quote unquote make it. I get there. I hated the McDonald's. I started falling in love with fine dining. And then like, obviously like the rest is history and just been working in some really cool places and stuff like that. So yeah. you never know. That's why the origin story is so important. You never know like people's, you know, like those little nuances, the little things that influence you to go in to do cool, interesting things, you know? Well, for sure. And I mean, let me know if I'm off base on this, but I feel like one of the reasons I'm always excited to connect with you is you seem like the type of person you have an optimism, you know, you're helping other people. Um, you have a joy of what you're doing. And I think hearing about where you expect it to be versus where I see you now, there's sort of like a defiance yeah. of expectations. Um, and I really identify Appreciate with that a lot. I mean, I didn't expect to have this huge career right. in Silicon Valley and never expected <laughs> to be, you know, sea level at, at a company. And so everything seems like bonus, right? right? To work in the crossroads of, of tech and, and social justice and creativity. Everything is such a gift. And so I think that there's this yeah. joy mm -hmm. of saying, hey, you know, you got started on this path. We never 100%. knew where it was going to lead. And we're living in this amazing uh, area of opportunity. 100%. And, I mean, and like optimism is something I think about daily because you meet so many people that maybe have a different outlook. And instead of being judgmental, I'm very like empathetic towards that. But like, I think it started for me of like, I just was the worst at track. And I used to have this coach and he was a Olympic coach. You know what I mean? He was the worst kid at track. But I think building during that time, like everything was so bad that made my entire life moving forward so good. You know what I mean? And like now, like I'm just so optimistic of the future. And like, I think that's what Web3 stands for, right? Optimism of the future of this new transition that we're going into. Um, and I just think it's so cool to be meet amazing people like you and obviously the team and just be around and just learn, right? I think learning is something that like we all can do. Anyone listening right now, we can all be curious and learn something new. So um, I just think it's great. And so as, as a kid, did you play Monopoly? Agreed. I did. I was not the best at it in my household, <laughs> I will have to admit. I have one older brother who is nine years older than me. And so you, when you're that much younger than your sibling, like you're not really set up to win right. at any game. So I got crushed hard. Uh, you know, we definitely had some <laughs> games happening in the household, but I was losing every it's, time. It was I'm always such lie. a long game for us. And uh, I remember, I remember playing Monopoly a lot as a kid. And man, I really wasn't that good. <laughs> I wasn't that good. But I, I guess it does teach you some <laughs> things, right? Like uh, it teaches you about money. It teaches you about entrepreneurship in a way, right? Like you get to own your first house, right? And all these things. And um, it was fun. I remember. For sure. It was definitely that right? feeling of having Even though it money. wasn't real. But we're uh, like, ooh, $500. I, this, is, yeah. this is cool. Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember when I was Actually, I don't think I've ever told this story to anyone, but I think when, you know, when you have these yeah. little moments in your childhood that sort of teach you a little bit about who you are, um, you know, I, I love Monopoly, but I, you know, playing against my brother, I would always lose, but I like that feeling right. of having money, right? right? That was, uh, as a kid, it's kind of empowering that you have those dollar bills. I remember I had, you know, my brother was already out of the house. Mm. I had a babysitter who came and took care of me. I was probably like eight or nine. And then she was, probably 13 or 14. I remember this moment we were playing Monopoly against each other um, <laughs> and I was smoking her. And it was this sort of moment where I realized one of the reasons was, it's like, she just, she like, she was a lovely person, but she was just good at the numbers. And I remember I kind of got in and I was like, oh, I'm actually like crushing this because I'm, I'm getting the numbers piece of it. Um, and I sort of had this moment like, oh, could I, could I be good at this? Like, could I be good at business? <laughs> and sort of yep. first little inkling yep. of like, could this be something? Um, and it all, it wow. all happened. Wow. I mean, that's Monopoly. such a fun, cool story. Cause now it's like a full circle moment, right? Because we're here 
to talk about the launch of Monopoly uh, with World of Women. And I mean, hearing those stories about how you had the little inkling like, oh, wait, this could this could actually be something. And now, years later, uh, you are working with um, World of Women that's going to launch their own Monopoly, I think, tomorrow. 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 This is crazy. Yes. Can you, can you speak to us a little bit about that? <laughs> it is crazy. Definitely. So for those who don't know too much about World of Women, we're a brand that's all about inclusion and the next generation of technology. Part of that is making sure that people are represented, that we're giving new access. Um, and we do that through our NFT collections. One is World of Women. One is World of Women Galaxy, which launched a little bit later. And the art is all about, you know, seeing new possibilities, uh, imagining women on the blockchain and uh, and ensuring that uh, women and all people have a representation in Web3 and NFTs and beyond. And we do two things. One is expand our community, which is a global community all around of people who believe the same things that we do. We do events. We bring our community together all over the world. And then the other is our brand. Um, if you've seen a world of women, it's a beautiful, diverse woman. Uh, we want that that image to spread and expand. And we envision 100 years from now, you'll look at a world of women mm -hmm. and it will be the same way as looking at a Frida Kahlo painting. You know that it stands for women's empowerment, especially in tech and business. And so one of the things that we love to do is license our World of Women brand with other brands, mix and match it all over the world to expose to new audiences and also give new people who don't yet know about WOW or our, or our mission ways to experience our brand. And so when we had the opportunity to collaborate with Monopoly and Hasbro, you know, we knew that over a billion people in the world play Monopoly. Um, it's how yeah. I learned about money, how, uh, you know, Millions of people around the world have learned about money. And we thought, what a cool way to introduce people to Italy. digital currency and mm. this digital financial system that is evolving. And so we have come out with a collaborative board, which will be available for purchase tomorrow. Um, and you have beautiful art that is totally reimagined with the world of women, um, you know, in across the board. And you actually play in digital wow. currency. So when you pass wow. go, you get ETH. And so we've kind of reimagined the game. The gameplay is very similar, but you are actually in the WoW galaxy. Um, everything is you're in a spaceship. And when you pass go, you know, you get this ETH as fuel and that powers your spaceship to continue to um, to go around the wow. galaxy. So, so we thought it's a really fun way from an access standpoint because we're all about bringing new people into this space, making them feel more comfortable with ideas like digital currency and just a fun way to get into a little bit of the stories behind the world of women and the galaxy yeah. and some of the lore and IP and world building that we've been excited like to do with this It's like the first step brand. of storytelling. And then it's, you have a physical product, but then it's also introducing, I think it's really fascinating. It's also introducing like the cryptocurrency into it, right? Like like people that don't really think about ether but like you know bitcoin whatever it is digital currency like this could be kids you know young children's first time really experiencing back to the story right like this was one of your first times having that inkling like people are like yeah, yeah, yeah. dad what's eth <laughs> you know like these these are the questions these yeah. are the questions that's what started. is it dad what's a world of women <laughs> what is this you know and and to yeah. see kind of go on and to exactly. build into things and this be like the first thing i think it's a super crazy collectible um and it's going to come out october 17th and the price is going to be 250 dollars, correct or or did we did we 249 249 you can pay in dollars 249 you can pay in dollars or you can actually pay Ooh, well, there uh, we go. In now for those people well. that would be like man 249 is a lot of money like talk to us a little bit about the collectability of it, right? Because this isn't just some this isn't just some monopoly board that has ETH in it. No, like this is like handcrafted, high quality collector's piece. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So we really wanted to make something that is a generational piece. And so it's not a 2D monopoly board. It is a 3D deluxe. The case is a maple wood cabinet. 
It's got a storage drawer that has all of your money. Um, the there's like built in, you know, gold foil stamp. Um, so it's this beautiful purple yeah, frame yeah, yeah. with like gold pieces. Yeah, People yeah. who have unboxed it have said it's a work of art because there's both World of Women uh, one of one champions in the mm. inside of the board. And then each individual tile of the board where you would see yeah, the yeah. park place or some of the other iconic places in Monopoly, you see locations that are in the WoW Galaxy with individual art that yeah. was created for every one of the tiles. So each of the tiles is an entire landscape and piece of art that was um, commissioned yeah. under Yam, our creative, chief yeah. creative officer's direction to build out Huge the world. Huge shout out to Yam. So love Yam. A lot Huge of people who Yam. are... <laughs> Oh my gosh, Yam is incredible. I mean, she put her heart and soul into this board because it was the first time that she had the opportunity to translate the world and the galaxy that is in her mind around these women that she's been drawing for years into how does that lore play out and what would it look like to actually play a game and be in their galaxy. And so it is her fingerprints incredible. are all over it. Um, so we... People are telling us they want to buy one yeah, yeah. To, to play at the holidays sure. with their family, you know, a collectible piece, and then maybe one to either, you know, store as a collectible or to showcase on their that's wall. So that's beautiful. just that beautiful. So we're really, really proud of how it turned out. The board is uh, wow. over 17 pounds. It is massive. Do a little workout with uh, that. So wow. it makes a statement. <laughs> that's <laughs> For in, sure. I mean, man, I'm I'm excited. I was able to get a little sneak peek of it. And um, it looks incredible. I can't wait to get it tomorrow when it drops. Um, I'm sure it's going to sell out. I mean, World of Women has such an, an incredible community of supporters and people that are doing amazing things as well. And I think I think the one thing that I do enjoy about World of Women is the community, right? Like just being able to meet so many like-minded women mm -hmm. and men and, and just people that are all about the same vision of just moving forward in diversity. You know, I think that's one thing that connected with me, right, was just like the importance of diversity and, and really just trying to do something um, important for the world, right? Talk to us a little bit about like some of the, the mission driven of World of Women, right? Like some of the reasons why is, right? Like sustainability is a huge thing, right? Like talk to us a little bit about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that, I mean, one, thank you for saying that. And I find that too about our community. I think that one of the things that gets me excited about the next wave of the internet and what makes me excited about what WOW is doing is, you know, with with every advancement of the internet, yeah. as we get more and more globally connected, we're more able to connect with people based on our values. And that's what I really have with World of Women. I feel like I meet people all over the world that own WOWs or, you know, maybe they don't know WOW yet, but they love WOW. But there is this idea of, you know, we believe in the mission. We want our daughters to have access in tech. We want every person to feel represented and it shouldn't just be one geography or um, specific background. Everyone should be there. Um, and we feel good about coming together for causes for good. Um, one of the things that really makes WOW different, and it is a little bit of a <laughs> meme in the community. We like to, uh, there's been a couple trending Twitter memes that WOW is different. Um, and I think one of the things that made, made WOW different Man. is we gave back from the start. Uh, so WOW committed $2 million, over $2 million actually, to women, girls, wow. and climate causes uh, that were raised from donating a percentage of the WOW, World of Women Galaxy bit. Um, the philanthropy was overseen by uh, the great Ina Moja, who has done phenomenal things, uh, CEO of Code Green, and really helped us do some really exciting and trackable donations on the blockchain so you can actually see the um, the donations and have trackable impact. Um, and a lot of those funds went into educating and creating opportunities for girls who wouldn't otherwise have them. Uh, one of the activations that we're most proud of and that our community most rallied around was working with Too Young to Wed to build a school wow. in Kenya for girls that otherwise would be forced into child marriage instead going in and having the opportunity to go to school. Um, that was really a moment for our community where we said, hey, like, you know, there's one view of Web3 of, hey, we're, we're selling JPEGs on the Man. internet. What are we really doing? But then to say, hey, actually with the, with the funds and raids and the collective and the values that we've cared about, we've taken this and we've actually built a school for 
for girls that wouldn't wow. otherwise have opportunity. Um, as a result of that work, Yam, our founding artist, was uh, actually named as a UN SDG ally, um, which Zakari, I know you came to that event um, where she was uh, presented with that opportunity. And so to see just the the community to come together and for that to translate into real world impact, I think is, you know, probably the, one of the things I'll be most wow. proud of in my entire lifetime. My drop. This is it's so, like, for me, I get like a front row seat to all this. You know, I feel like I'm living through history and, and you as well and everyone. So it's so beautiful to see. I think, you know, to the, to the young girl that's growing up right now, she's going to grow up in Web3 and then she's going to see amazing people like Yim, amazing people like you kind of just doing the damn thing, right? Like, what would you say to her to, I don't know, like, like advice or like, you know, what are the, some of the things that help you from a day to day? Like, you know, if she came up to you, it was like, Shannon, I want to be like you. Like, you know, obviously you'd be flattered, but like, what would you say to her? How could you help her? I think the first thing is realizing that history is wrong, but yeah. it doesn't need to stay that way. If you look at a wall, if you're in the U.S. and you just yeah. look at a wall of presidents, you know, you're not seeing women, you're not seeing the diversity that we know makes up this country. But that's that past is not an indicator of future success. Women didn't have the opportunity to even have their own bank account yeah. without a husband or a father signing on it wow. until the 70s. And a lot has changed since then. And so I think what I would say is, hey, <laughs> I know it looks bad in terms of the opportunity, but a lot has changed since then. And you have to believe that the future is going to be different. I think the other thing I would say is work hard and have confidence that you do. Things will change for you. Um, one of the things that I took most from my experience at Google was, I mean, it was shocking that there were just so many young people at Google. Like all the time people would come in and they would have heard so much about Google. I mean, we're in the Mountain View campus, you know, it's like where it all happens. You know, every week we would have high level speakers coming in to speak with us and they would just look out in the crowd and they would be like, is Chris this Finn. it? Like who's in charge, right? They just saw like a ton of people in their early 20s right. who were just figuring it out. And I found that, you know, for me coming into that environment, you know, when you're called to step up, like you do, you know, I came into Google as, you know, entry level employee and in five quarters, I was already managing a team wow. of 50 people in India and they just, they were expanding so fast. They just yeah. needed you to step up. And I think if you work hard and you listen and you set high, you know, you're good with people, you know, you do the work. Yeah. Like you can outperform the expectations that are there for you from the society. And so I think like, you know, believe in yourself, do the work to actually be great. Um, but know that when you have that opportunity to rise up, what do you, you'll first be of all, that's incredible. What do you like owe to during that time, like that transition? Like that's not easy, right? You start off as a, as a regular just employee, but then you're talking about going to India and now you're leading teams. Like, like, where did that drive come from you? Was that something that you feel like was instilled from you as a kid? Was it just like hard work ethic? Was it a natural ability? Like, what really do you owe to that time to really make that that full transition? A couple of things. I was extremely lucky yeah. in the sense that I went to an all women university, uh, wealthy well, college. Hold on, that's that's um, great. And that's that was a full circle <laughs> moment, right? Like that's crazy <laughs> wow oh i mean it, it wasn't so what happened was my high school actually had transitioned from being an all boys high school to wow. having women and <laughs> i mean way later than it would have right and so i was one of the first classes that had women in the class yeah. and while it evened out by the time i graduated you know i i felt like for the first couple of years i was attending you know <laughs> an all-male high school and so by the time, by the time it came for college, I was like, I just want to be at a college where they want to educate women and where they really believe in us. And that influenced my decision hugely. And when I got there, you do sort of have this moment where you realize that society has sort of taught you, oh, to just look to the man in the room to get something done. Like I was on the college radio station at Wellesley. You know, usually you would expect, okay, there's going to be a tech guy in the background that's going to, you know, 
run everything. And you just look around and you're like, oh, it's us. Like, I need to step up. I need to learn to be technical. I need to know how to use all of this equipment. Like, it's on me. And so that definitely primed me on a personal level. I think other people can come to this realization much earlier. But I think if you had met me in high school, you would say, Shannon is never a person who's going to be the leader in the room. And I think after that Wellesley experience, you know, I knew that I could be. So I think that that was certainly formative. Um, And just being willing to jump in. I mean, I think not a lot of people are... uh, are always willing to go outside right. of their comfort zone. Um, when I went to India, uh, you know, for that opportunity, I think, you know, they probably approached other people and other people weren't willing to jump I in and move sure. to India for six months in order to take on a leadership opportunity. <laughs> and I was willing wow. to move. And so I think sometimes it's like, you know, a little bit uh, having the skills and a what little bit you, willing, so willing spent, to So I spent up. about a year in the Netherlands working and you know that year for me was like incredible i learned so much about myself and it's just a totally different culture right um and obviously the food right is just like incredible talk to us a little bit about like did you find or discover anything about yourself and and how was the food (laughs) i mean the food was incredible i will say i had a little bit of a leg up um my uh yeah. long long-term boyfriend at the time and and Where now husband of many years for uh is from in, mm. born in the u.s but from india and so when i moved to india it actually i'd already been you know to visit ah, his family and okay. so I, it wasn't my first time i already had a high proficiency <laughs> in spicy food which doesn't, doesn't hurt, hurt at all um <laughs> Doesn't hurt. And I had worked a little bit abroad. So uh, during during college, I actually moved to Korea and spent three months um, working on the English edition of a Korean newspaper uh, in Seoul. And so I had a little bit of that experience of what it's like to be an expat. And there's pros and cons, right? Like you stand out, people know who you are. Uh, you don't know the culture. You have to operate in a very um, mm-hmm. humble way because I think you have to really understand the culture but also understand what's the business objective right. you're trying to achieve together so um so wow. yeah so I jumped full into that experience I loved it and actually I ended up moving I was there for six months that original time and then uh my now husband ended up joining Google really? uh soon after then we went back together wow. to it for another year to India, um, which was also an incredible experience. That. And it's, uh, wow. it's something I cherish I for my entire so life. That's such an amazing story. Yeah. Do you have a favorite favorite food, like whether it's Indian or whether it's Turkish or whether it's like, do you have something that stands out to you that's your favorite? I think there's nothing better. I mean, while we're on the topic <laughs> of Indian food, I think that feeling, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever had dosa. Yes. It's sort of like a South Indian. But it's fermented. Great- uh, and it sort of is that, yeah, it's that feeling when, you know, when you're at home for on Saturday or Sunday and you're just yeah. making pancakes on the stove and, and eating them up. That's what dosa is. It's like you fire them up and there's a little bit of culture around it. The first dosa right, gotta... is always a bad one. So you never give anyone the first <laughs> yep. dosa, you know, you gotta yep. get the oil on the pan and you know, this idea yep, of who's yep, gonna yep. get the hot one off and who's gonna get the little soggy <laughs> it's the one. full experience. So, uh, <laughs> I think that's a whole full experience. experience. One of my, one of my yeah. good friends, uh, Ajesh, is from oh India. And he made us uh, his grandmother's recipe for dosa. And he fermented and then made it. And uh, it was so good. Just thinking about it right now. <laughs> we love that. Oh, my gosh. What's that food for you? That cozy food that gives not only the, the taste, but I think, the experience. I mean, for me, my, you know, my grandmother grew up in the South. So I think Southern food, you know, I think like just like I remember just mm-hmm. growing up like the kitchen door was always closed and I was a young kid and like we always used to have to dress up or put on clothes like to get to the to the table and so like they didn't allow me in as a kid and I think just as a kid you're always more curious right so like I was just always like what's going on in here guys (laughs) I would just come through like like this smells good you know like my grandma uh, my great grandmother who's 99 she's still living and um she used to make breakfast rice uh, as a kid a lot and she used to just overcook rice and it would come out kind of Ugh. like grit so like a porridge almost for breakfast and um so good and then you would smell wow. like the country sausage we lived on a farm she lived on a farm so like she would go out and get the eggs and you know all these things and stuff like that so uh just growing uh. up and and for me i think it was great because it was always a break from the city life or like new york life because we used to go visit down south every summer so mm-hmm. you know the hustle and bustle of new york yeah but then 
you go down south, everything is a lot slower, a lot calmer, fresh ingredients. And now, you know, a lot of those light bulb moments, those those full circle moments. Now I appreciate, you know, fresh, seasonal, farm, you know, delicious ingredients so much more because I appreciate it, right? Like I'm just a lot more grateful for it and like what the earth has for, to yeah. offer us. And it's a lot better for us. It tastes better. Like it's just so much, it's cheaper most of the time. Like it's it's just really cool. That's super cool. And I mean, it's also really cool. What an experience to, to grow up both, both knowing like New York, the city life, which is so quintessentially American, but then also understanding the Southern experience, the yeah. farm experience, um, which is also so American as 100%. well and to bring those together. Uh, what a secret <laughs> And to your point, you know, when, you, when you went to India, it wasn't your first time. When I went to the Netherlands, I lived on a farm. And so, like, I spent a, I spent a lot of my summers mm-hmm. on the farm. So for me, it wasn't like a, a huge culture shock. It was like it was amazing, but it was like at home. You know what I mean? And so I yeah. think those things are so 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 cool yeah. and so so important. Um, it's I could talk to you all day, Shannon, which is great. But I know you have a busy busy life. And, but so I, before we get out of here, you know, I want to know, you know, what's next for World of Women. What's next for Shannon? You know, what are some of your goals? What are some of the things that you really want to do? Any alpha? Do, and, and if this is a Web2 community or, or a lot of, you know, my community, uh, what does alpha mean? It just means that, you know, just drop something for us. You know, tell us a little bit about what's going on uh, in the world of women's lives and your life and everything like that. Absolutely. Yeah. So what's next for World of Women? We want to continue to expand our community, I think, World of Women Monopoly is a great step to that. What I hope in the next year is we continue to do brand collabs that get our brand out there and that this community, which I think people really identify with, not just in Web3, has the opportunity to expand beyond. Like in a year from now, I want people who do not know how to buy an NFT to feel like, oh no, I follow World of Women on social media. Mm -hmm. I've actually been to their events. Like I'm going to join their community um, and so I think if you, if success for me is more brand collabs that bring world of women to the table, uh, in new and exciting ways and a community that is expanding beyond the surface of web three, uh, and much more into wow. a broad audience than, um, for anyone who is interested to learn about it and learn about what we are, um, we're just world of women on Instagram. So follow us and and check out what we're doing. We'd love to have you come to our events. Wow, that was that was that's gonna great. be my next question. So that's good. Um, and then on <laughs> that's good. <laughs> uh, and then on a personal standpoint, I just really want to continue to be mission driven. This is what I'm about right now in my life. Um, and I love the fact that every day at Wow, I get to use my skills that I've learned in tech, but also my passion, which is making the world a better place. So. Um, I hope to just be continuing on that mission and connecting with like, like minded people like yourself, um, that are trying to educate and use tech for good because well, I know that well, it's- I don't know any other better way than to end this show than that. Um, <laughs> Shannon, thank you so, so much, uh, for, you know, just blessing us with your time. Like time is the most valuable asset. So we really, really appreciate it. And I hope everyone listening learned something new. I was a bit more curious and maybe they never heard of World of Women and maybe now they, they want to kind of be a part of it and uh, they can kind of learn about it a little bit differently. So um, that's Shannon Snow and this is the show, Sipping with Sakari for another episode. Cheers uh, to you and to everyone listening. We're out. Yeah. Cheers.